Hello everybody and welcome to another FAQ Monday where we tackle all of the hard hitting questions, four or five questions at a time. And if you're just waking up, good morning, sweetie. Go ahead and get your blankie and gather up on the couch and maybe get your bowl of cereal and buckle in because we are in for the ride of your life. Today, lots of stuff to cover. Let's get started. First question. What are the best noise suppressor pedals you can recommend? And are they really needed on just a bedroom practice amp? Noise gate pedals are always good to have if you don't like a lot of excessive noise and feedback, especially if you're doing the high gain thing. Uh, with bedroom practice amps, a lot of the Line 6 Spider stuff and all those kinds of amps, they already have a noise gate built in, so most of the time you don't need them for the bedroom playing, unless you're running like, you know, a, a, an orange gym route or something like that, then yes. Um, I highly recommend running just a simple noise gate in front of your uh, amps input just to clean everything up and get rid of any, any feedback or anything like that. As far as pedals that I like, there's actually only one that I like and it's the uh, ISP Decimator. And I just ordered an ISP Decimator 2 a couple of days ago. And prior to that coming out, I didn't use noise gates at all because they chopped off the high end and no matter what anybody says, or what anybody ever tells me, nope, man, it leaves your tone completely intact and doesn't take away anything. That's not true at all. Boss NS2, I'm looking at you, man, because that pedal is absolutely atrocious, with the exception of the old ones, like the pre-mid-90s pedals. The old pedals, those were actually really good, but then in the mid-90s, at some point, they changed something, and whenever you turn it on, you're, the top end of your guitar's tone just is chopped, gets a crew cut, and it's awful. MXR Smartgate, same thing, chops off all the high end. I just, sorry, all noise gates, except for the ISP decimator that I have found, in my experience, affect your tone in some way, shape, or form. So uh, I highly recommend getting an ISP decimator pedal. You can either spring for the regular pedal, you can get the G-string, which is two loops, and actually you can hook that up to the your amp's effects loop as well, or you can get the super Mondo Blingen rack mount unit, which oh, is delicious and I would love to have it, but it's just too expensive. But yeah, ISP Decimator, you will not regret it. Hey Fluff, love the vids. Anyway, I wanna start getting into video recording for YouTube, like doing covers and stuff. Any ideas on how to start? I'm on a very tight budget, and would it be possible to do it all from my iPhone? Cheers from Florida. Just start posting videos, man. You gotta start somewhere, and the more you just start doing it, the better you will get at it. And as for your iPhone, you can absolutely just start posting from your iPhone. The YouTube app is uh, allows you to just upload uh, straight to your channel, and you can even edit a little bit now. And the cameras on the iPhones are very, very good. The weak spot with most phones is the audio. And if you wanna spend just a little bit of money, I highly recommend getting the newly released Focusrite iTrack Pocket. And what the iTrack Pocket is, it's kind of like a baby brother of the iTrack dock that I showed a few weeks ago on this channel. And it has a very high quality set of microphones built in and it also has an electric guitar input and you can use Focusrite's free app. You can plug right into it and you can talk to it. You can use the camera of your iPhone and record the audio from the high quality mics of the iTrack Pocket all in one and then upload it straight to YouTube and have a much better quality video than the built-in microphone of the iPhone. And it's awesome. And if you want to see a sample, click right here. Hey Fluff, can you show me your process of writing songs and riffs? Every time I write W riff, I can never turn it into anything that sounds half decent. Please help if you can, thanks. My method for writing riffs and songs in general is just kind of humming it out and I'll have a general tempo in mind, and maybe I'll have a, a, a drum beat in mind first. Um, I like to work a lot with drums, so a lot of the times I will bring up just a stock beat in Tune Track Easy, Easy Drummer 2 just to play along to. I don't like playing along to just to click. That seems kind of sterile and boring, and I'll just riff it out. Most of the time I will be sitting on the couch and I will just think of a riff. I'll hum it in my head. Something like that. And then I'll come up here and I'll grab a guitar and figure out the tuning. Normally it's right around 
you know, drop B, drop C, something like that, and I'll just find it. And that's really half the battle of writing is knowing where to go when you hear something in your head. And from there, if you have that first riff, that's the seed, and you just repeat that, play it over and over and over and over again, and just slowly build it and build parts. The whole song does not come to you at once. That never happens to anybody, I promise. And if they say it does, they're lying. That never absolutely ever happens. Like, oh, I have an entire song in my head right now. Oh, there's the chorus, there's the bridge. That doesn't happen. So it can take a few days, it can take a few hours. I'm not saying some of the songs that you've heard, like some of the huge mega hits have been written in five minutes, but still took five minutes to write. So just keep at it, repeat it, hum it, think about it, feel it, and just relax, man. It's all good. There are always more riffs to be written. Can you explain or make a video about busing? I'm confused on how, why, and when to do it. Thanks. For those of you home recording enthusiasts, busing can be really thought of as summing, and there are two different kinds of buses. Now, for this example, I'm going to talk about a drum kit. I will have my drum, drum kit, my individual pieces of my drum kit right here, and let's say I have them sounding good, and right now, in default, they are going to the stereo out bus of my DAW, my digital audio workstation. In this case, it's Logic Pro X. Now, if I wanna add a compressor to the entire kit, how would I do that? I would not want to put a compressor on each individual track for a few reasons. A, that's gonna eat up a lot of CPU and a lot of uh, computing power, and B, they're not going to affect the uh, individual tracks the same. So I will route a bus, and I'll, I'll create a bus, a stereo bus, and I will call this the drum bus, and I will route all those individual pieces to the drum bus, and then I will add one compressor to that track. And that way, all of the pieces are being compressed. And I can also control the overall volume of those individual tracks as well. So if you do have individual compressors on the individual drum parts, you don't have to worry about the individual volumes hitting the compressors any differently or anything like that. So it's really linear. Now the other kind of bus for this same example is maybe I wanna give the snare a little bit of room. So I will create an effects send and I will send in this example, the snare and maybe the toms to a reverb bus. The reverb bus can be thought of as basically saving computing power and it's a sum, so if I want to use the same reverb on the toms and the snare to give it just a little bit of room sitting down low, nothing too obvious, I will have a bus with a reverb plug-in loaded in one instance, and then I will route the individual parts of the kit to that in parallel to also going to the stereo drum bus. So then that way you have two buses in this particular example, you will have the main guitar bus, or the main drum bus, excuse me, and the reverb auxiliary bus. And those are both then going to the stereo out. Now you can even send those if you wanted to and send both those to a bus and control the overall volume of all of those things previously in the chain. If you get a chance, you should do something with your flashback delay. I think it'd be cool to see you try some delays slash reverb slash modulations or whatever. Uh, okay. <laughs> This week's suggestion, I would like you guys to go and check out me and Rob Scallon's new video over here and watch him almost get signed to Super Metal Records. And you also get to hear some of the new tune track tones from the Guitar Gods 2 plug-in pack, which we will be checking out right here on this channel very soon. That is all I got this week, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next week. Fluff out. Check, check, mecca, mecca, check, check. Mike. Check. One. Rhythm's horrible.
cash rules everything around me. Get the cream. Dollar dollar bill, y'all. Is this thing on? <laughs>